All right, welcome. Thank you all for joining us on a Sunday evening at 7.30 when I'm sure a, an organ-related uh, church project is the last thing that Janet or Carolyn or any of the rest of us would like to be doing. So I will keep my introduction for them very brief so that we can get to uh, to their project. I'm really excited to uh, welcome both of them on behalf of Fairfield West AGO and St. John's Lutheran Church in Stamford. Uh, very thrilled that both of these organizations have made it a, a goal and a priority to put this focus on your, your project and amplifying female composers. Um, I really can't say enough about Janet and Carolyn. They're just fantastic musicians and people, and I love all the work that they're doing. And at this moment, I'm going to welcome them and turn the evening over to them. Thank you so much, Nathan. And Janet and I would like to thank the Fairfield AGO for having us. It's such a pleasure to get to share our work with you. Um, we're going to talk a, a little bit about our project, Amplify Female Composers as well as about resources that you all can use as organists, as choral directors, as planners, um, as, as you go forth in your work. Um, of course, women, women's work is underrepresented in composition um, and uh, as, as are works of so many other demographics and we are committed to um, just leveling the playing field. And we also really appreciate the work that men do <laughs> to help us in that um, in that goal. So this is this is for all of us and uh, we're really excited to be here. Thank you. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and we have uh, a few things prepared for you. It will include videos and graphics and at one point there is also a quiz. So I hope you're prepared and ready. Um, give me just a thumbs up if you're seeing um, the screen right now. It should say Fairfield AGO, that's you. Um, so we thought we would start by talking about the beginnings of our project, which uh, when we look back really wasn't that long ago, um, but it's really a joy to be able to share with you a little bit tonight. So um, for me, uh, being a musician in New York City, I realized um, when I was putting together a concert for a festival at Trinity Wall Street, where I was working in 2019, um, as part of a festival called Times Arrow, where we were celebrating uh, women composers, um, that it was sort of a, a task or a feat to, to go through and put together a whole program of organ music. Um, I ended up putting together a program for organ and voice and flute um, and was joined by two colleagues and had a great time just looking through all this music, Clara Schumann, all sorts of chamber music as well as organ repertoire. Um, and it was at that point that I realized um, that what we were doing at Trinity included women's voices in the concert realm, um, but that on the church side and on the um, sacred music sort of programming uh, that we could probably do a little bit better. Um, so Carolyn, um, if you'd like to talk about fall 2020 to fast forward. Sure. Um, I was in a similar boat. I was looking for um, music to program by women, but I just didn't know because it's not done a lot and, and you, you have to really look into it. Um, thankfully, my music director, Walden Moore at Trinity on the Green was very much on board and he just ordered single copies of pretty much every anthem that Lois Fife had by a woman and uh, as perusal scores. And, and then we ordered our favorites. So I loved reading through those. Um, I put my favorites for uh, Advent on Facebook and then Janet just reached out and said, hey, we should, we should do something, uh, it, you know, because uh, one of the things that I didn't like about just putting a list on Facebook of good pieces is that it's just a list. Um, and you still have to go listen, you still have to go perform. There's another step to be taken there. And um, my director of music at Trinity, Julian Wachner, was very supportive of this from the beginning. 
Um, he encouraged me to continue doing this research. And once Carolyn and I came up with an idea, um, the original idea, I think in December or November 2020, was to put together a Lessons in Carols program. And then we thought, well, an advent calendar could be an idea that puts together a number of um, collaborative aspects. It allowed us to reach out to our colleagues from across the country um, and to sort of get a sense of um, what we might be able to do by sending out resources of music lists and things that we loved. So um, we came up with this concept um, called Amplify Female Composers. And we reached out to um, music directors and organists from all over the US as well as in the UK. And we asked them whether they had favorites of Christmas and Advent music. Again, this was in December 2020, at the height of the pandemic at that point. And we really weren't sure what the response might be, but we were really just blown away by how supportive everybody was. We were able to put together all sorts of videos um, that represent composers um, from all over the world and also represented choirs who were um, either at cathedrals or at universities or at parish churches. So here's a look at our very first um, December. We were joined by all of these different choirs and they all con contributed at least one piece and they all chose different things. That was one of the lovely aspects of this is we sent out and compiled perhaps like a top 30 list that Carolyn and I had um, recommended. And then we also were met with new music that we hadn't found yet. So we set about putting out one piece of music online every day because in our own research, we realized, well, if you're looking at a new piece of music and you're a choir director, it really helps to either be able to see the score, to have a perusal score, or to be able to listen to it and get a sense if it's right for your group, if it's something that will fit into the context of your program or your church or your school. And so we were just um, really thrilled to have this response. So I'd like to, we'd like to have us listen to one of these pieces. How many of you are familiar with Sally Beamish? This piece, you, if you are, it may be from King's College this year. This was on their Lessons and Carols um, at King's this past year. Sally Beamish is a very distinguished British composer. She's composer in residence at St. Martin's in the Fields, like working with all of the top people, um, has a major opera, the temp uh, a major ballet, The Tempest, The Judas Passion, and um, it's really just incredible work. And this is a lovely, four part accessible simple gorgeous piece so um let's hear a little bit of it this was uh, recorded by jesus college cambridge for our amp uh, for our advent calendar project in 2020. <laughs> pause it there for the moment, but I promise that all these videos are online and you can listen to them in their entirety. The next clip we thought we would share with you also comes from this initial December 2020 Advent calendar. This is the choir of the Cathedral of St. John the Divine here in New York City, directed by their um, associate director at the time, Dr. Ray Nagum featuring their professional choir. You'll see as this video begins that this was recorded at home. And so this was actually a um, 
virtual choir activity <laughs> that they put together for us. Um, this piece is My Eyes for Beauty Pine by Elizabeth Coxhead, uh, who is a producer for BBC uh, Three Radio um, and her brother Thomas Coxhead. My eyes for you. there just because we'd like to share more with you. Um, but as you can see, one of my favorite things about that video is looking into everyone's box, which feels a lot like looking into everyone's New York City studio apartment. Um, but we were really grateful for um, videos that were able to be recorded live, those that were um, virtual choir videos such as this. Um, to give you a sense of what we had in our first two weeks, you can see these are the pieces by date. Um, Sarah McDonald contributed the very first piece, O Come O Come Emmanuel, with her choristers. Um, we have um, Eleanor Daly, Judith Queer, Carlotta Ferrari. Um, we had this video that you just heard on December 5th. What's really um, special to us as we look back at this very first project is that um, looking at December 9th, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus, which is an arrangement by Marty Wheeler Burnett, um, has been published since then. So it's now available. Um, it was a piece that she had shared with us. Um, and if you look at December 11th, The Morning Trumpet, arranged by Denise Kimball, is also uh, now available and has been published um, since these initial premiere videos um, were released. So we're really, really glad to have partnered with these composers um, and to um, be a small part of their, um, their projects and their compositions. So um, all of this information is available on our website, amplifyfemalecomposers.org. You can go listen still to all of these videos. And we're going to pivot now to something a little bit different. Um, so after we collapsed after the <laughs> Advent Calendar project, um, we got ourselves back together for March um, 2021, and we did this Stations of the Cross, um, which was um, essentially organ meditations on each station of the cross. We compiled Lenten organ pieces, most of them um, are explicitly Lenten, but some of them are just meditative. So there are some that if you like, you can excerpt and, and use at other times. Um, if you'd like to look this up on, on YouTube, um, as a reference, um, you can see all the pieces there and on our website, um, there's, there's a tab for Stations of the Cross and you can read publication information about all of them in case you're interested in playing them this, this season. Um, for each of these pieces, um, we had a, a different fantastic performer. You can see the list of names here. Uh, we're really honored to have gotten to work with these incredible people and that these people uh, were willing to share their performances with us. So to share another video clip with you, this is a video recorded by David Ball, who is director of music at uh, Christ Cathedral in Orange, California. So we are now on the other side of the country 
I'm going to toggle my screen so that we can take a listen. And what you're going to be hearing from him is um, a organ piece by Germain Taillefer, so French composer um, entitled Corral. that incredible b-roll of David looking at the glass of Christ Cathedral. It's my favorite part of this video. Um, as you may have noticed, this is um, an electronic organ that they had in their space. Um, but since then, in the last month, I believe, their brand new Hazel Wright organ has just been um, unveiled and heard uh, for the first time. So exciting things happening at Christ Cathedral in California. Um, so this is a, a slightly different list that shows you the composers that we were able to feature in this project um, over the 14 stations of the class um, in March of last year. So I mentioned earlier that there was going to be a quiz. Um, and here we are now looking at a couple of photos of different organists. Now, what I would love to do is go around, perhaps you can go around clockwise, and we'll start with the composer who is sitting at the organ console. Um, if anybody would like to raise their hand on your Zoom um, end there, uh, does anybody know who this is, who we see at the console? I saw Evan, sorry. Go for it, go ahead. Uh, that's Jean de Messieu. That is Jean Demessieu, student of Marcel Dupre, virtuoso Parisian organist. Okay, next to her going clockwise, who is this? Any thoughts? I hear someone unmuted. Florence Price. Florence Price, very good. American composer, um, originally from Arkansas, who settled in Chicago. Um, and a uh, wonderful organist and composer. Um, let's continue going clockwise. 
uh, the woman, well, okay, all three of them are wearing hats, so that doesn't narrow it down. But if we go to the black and white photo in the right corner, who is that? Any thoughts? Is that Claire Koshy? It's not. Any other thoughts? Okay, we'll come back to her. So going uh, clockwise up from there, who do we think that is in the top right corner uh, wearing the, the, the first stole in black and white? I'll give you a clue. You very recently heard a piece of music by her. So recently, it may have been in the last five minutes. What are we thinking? I think that's Taifer. That is it. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Parisian composer, member of Les Six, uh, the only uh, female member of that um, group of French composers um, from the turn of the century. So who is this last person um, in the middle wearing um, what is a nun's habit in her painting? thoughts? I was going to say Hildegard von Bingen. That's a little bit earlier than we than we're thinking here. Oh, 16. Oh, sorry. Right <laughs> you're on the right track. Yes. I don't know how many I mean, there. Okay, there are paintings of Hildegard von Bingen, but this looks to be a likeness of someone from the 16th century. Anyone else? I'm going to start calling on people if no one uh, volunteers. Just kidding, just kidding. All right, let's 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 do our reveal here. So we got the first three. We have Caterina Assandra, who is an Italian nun. Uh, lovely piece. Um, and these are all composers that were featured in our March um, Stations of the Cross. So you can go back and listen to a work by them. Caterina Assandra, Italian nun. Uh, Jovan Taiaferra, who we identified in the top corner here, member of Lacy's. Jeanne Demisia, another Parisian organist and composer here on um, in the middle of our slide. Oh, um, so Florence Price right here and Ethel Smythe. Uh, does that name ring a bell for anyone? British composer Ethel Smythe. Um, she was very involved also in um, women's rights uh, and women's voting rights movements in England. All right. You thought that was it. Now we're moving on to the living composers. So take a look at the faces that we see here. These are all people, again, that were featured in our um, Stations of the Cross last March. Does anybody recognize someone right off the bat? Feel free to chime in. Evan? Um, Rochelle Laurent. Rochelle Loren, yes, there she is right um, here is in the second spot um, at the console. Um, composer from Quebec, I see Andrea Brock. Uh, Brenda Portman is in the um, in the sort of teal blue uh, blazer smiling at us in the center. That's right. That's Brenda right here in the middle. Um, mm -hmm. If you tuned in last summer or the summer before that, um, to our National AGO um, or Organ Fest, you would have heard her prize-winning commissioned piece uh, for the National AGO that was uh, played um, in the sunshine. Anyone else that we recognize? Chelsea Chen. Chelsea Chen, yes. Chelsea Chen, uh, who uh, for a long time lived here in New York City and um, splits her time between here and Switzerland currently, but of course, fantastic concert organist, um, as well as composer. Um, the piece that we featured by her actually appears, um, it's an arrangement of Let Us Break Bread Together. And um, it appears in the Oxford Book of um, Seasonal Church Music. So there's sort of an Oxford Book um, of organ music based on hymn tunes for Lent and Easter. There's another one for um, 
Christmas and Advent and harvest season and communion. Um, and those are um, books that are uh, co-edited by Rebecca Groom Tevelt, uh, who also participated in this particular project. Okay, we have two left. Any other thoughts of who we know? Okay, <laughs> we'll do the reveal here. So we have Judith Bingham and Roxana Panufnik, who are both living composers um, based in England. Um, and we said we have Rochelle Loran here, Canadian composer, Rebecca Grimdeveld, who we mentioned, Brenda Portman, and Chelsea Chen. All right. So we are going to cap off this particular section. Um, and Carolyn will tell us a little bit about what we're going to hear next. Um, so I know we have some Florence Price fans here. Um, this is the finale from uh, Price's first sonata. Um, you may know that Price was influenced by Guimont, and you certainly hear that in this. Uh, this is performance by Nat Gums, and he does an absolutely fantastic job. I'm hoping to learn this piece very soon and I just I, it's such a, a compelling piece so I hope you enjoy I'm also going to pop a link in the chat of one of my favorite pieces from that uh, stations of the cross because it's um it's public domain um so it's very easy to um, download it's um this tantum ergo sacramentum but let's have a listen to this finale thematic material. So uh, again, encourage you to go listen to that, especially as we are approaching um, the season of Lent and Holy Week. This is a look at our complete program of what um, appeared in the Stations of the Cross. And we are going to go on now to um, another season. So Last summer, I had an opportunity to work together with a professional choir of Trinity Wall Street. Um, it was a really lucky thing because Julian Walkner had asked our staff if we had ideas of projects for the choir in the summertime. This was in that really um, narrow window of July um, 2021 when everyone in our choir was vaccinated and we were able to safely sing unmasked for closed broadcast services in the church. So we had a really unusual opportunity in the middle of 2021 to record pieces together. And so Carolyn and I were brainstorming and I mentioned to Julian that it could be a really fantastic opportunity to record music by women composers. So. We recorded them all in July. Um, he conducted um, several of them, I conducted several of them, and Avi Stein, um, our colleague, also did. And so starting in September, we released a new piece of music every Friday featuring the Choir of Trinity Wall Street. 
And all of this music was taken from a partner project that Carolyn and I both work on called A Great Host of Women Composers. Um, the Great Host project aims to put together a database, but also lectionary based recommendations for every Sunday of the three church lectionary reading years. So um, I've been working together with a team including Carolyn, Susan Jane Matthews, who founded that project, Sarah McDonald, Marissa Hall, and um, Lynn Lowy, and oh no, Carolyn, I'm forgetting, I think one person. <laughs> who else is in there? Marissa. Oh, you said Marissa. Marissa um, Hall. Brian Woods Lustig. Brian Woods Lustig. So um, all of us come together once a quarter once a quarter to put together recommendations of choral music for every Sunday that matches the reading by women composers. This is a free um, resource that we've put together online that I'm sure Carolyn will tell you a little bit more about later. But what we did is we picked music from that um, in order to highlight um, the work of that group. So I am going to play now Ave Verum Corpus by Stephanie Martin, who is a Toronto-based composer. She has several motets. This comes from a set of four different pieces that includes um, an osakun, uh, as well as a suku trebus, and um, the very much four-part a cappella SATB music that is very Eucharist appropriate. And I'm going to toggle my screen once more. And hopefully, here we go. Share this video with you. Um, Stephanie Martin, Ave Verum. Okay, so this is a piece that is available um, online, and that is one of my favorite things, <laughs> when you can find and download something um, through the internet, legally. So um, I'm taking us back now to, um, actually I think I'm taking us to another video, um, and this is a piece by an Italian Augustinian nun um, named Raffaella Aleotti, sometimes known as Vittoria Aleotti. Uh, she uh, is believed to have been lived to have lived in around 1570 to 1620. And she was an organist, a composer, uh, a conductor, apparently also a trombonist. And um, this is a really lovely example of um, a piece that comes to us um, from a historical composer. So if anybody ever asks you if there were women composing um, in the 
15th and 16th centuries, uh, now you can name two of them. So a little bit of her miserere mei prose. just to give you a, a sense of this piece of polyphony. Um, coming back now to our presentation, here we are, okay. Um, going back to our presentation, um, after we did uh, about 15 pieces of music in September, October, and November, Carolyn and I collaborated with um, another group known as the Boulanger Initiative. Uh, which was co-founded by Joy Leilani Garbutt um, from the DC area and Laura Colgate, who's a violinist. Um, they have put together a wonderful project that really uh, puts its focus on orchestral music and is aiming to work with national orchestras around the country um, to um, encourage music by women composers be performed on those stages. Um, as Joy is an organist herself, she um, and Susan Jane Matthews and I came up with uh, an idea to celebrate the centennial of Jeanne de Messieurs, who we talked a little bit about earlier. Um, and we thought a fitting way to celebrate her would be to put together video projects of her organ music. So you see a little bit of a preview here in the top left corner of your screen, which was a five person effort to record the Demacia Te Deum. Um, this included um, Susan, who is in the middle here from Burlingame, California near San Francisco, Kimberly Marshall, who recorded for us from Europe as she was traveling. Um, this is Joy in her church in California on the bottom right, and then Caitlin Emerson, who recorded on the Skinner organ at Church of the Advent in Boston. So we each recorded the Te Deum and then uh, had it put together like a puzzle. Uh, it was a pretty um, unusual and fun project. Um, and then the second of three parts of this Demisieux centennial celebration and partnership was putting together a recording of her 12 chorale preludes. Now these 12 chorale preludes she published and um, actually included in her performances when Demisio would travel um, all over the United States, um, she would include these shorter pieces. There are 12 pieces that are based on Gregorian chant themes, so they're appropriate for all different seasons. I'm curious if anybody on the call tonight has played either one or two or three of these, um, just maybe by a show of hands, I'm curious who knows of these pieces or has played them in church. Um, the Rurate Celi and the Attende Domine are probably the best known works. They're really, really lovely um, prelude music uh, choices, as the title suggests here. So at this point, this took us back to December 2021, which marked one year of our um, original Advent calendar. So I'm going to turn it over to Carolyn to talk a little more. So um, in 2021, we thought that we would do another Advent calendar project since our first one had gone so well and had just, um, it, it seemed to really invigorate people. Um, we were really excited about doing another. And um, so we put together another 25 days of choral, daily choral and organ videos. Um, 
And this is one of the pieces that we recorded. It's Cecilia McDowell's Now May We Sing In. I'm a big fan of Cecilia McDowell. I saw somebody else in the chat was as well. Um, and this is sort of a, a neo-medieval um, piece that she's written. Um, she did, actually did an interview with us and mentioned that um, some reviewer or writer had thought that this that this was an actual medieval tune that she was using, but she actually just made an original tune that sounds so convincing. Um, and th this is just a fantastic piece. Yep. No. share um, but this is a, a lovely piece right so um, at this point I'm going to close that and allow you um, Carolyn to share what you'd like from your end absolutely um, so I think do we have one more slide with upcoming projects yes we do so <laughs> that's fine <laughs> this one um, we'll bring this back up here we go um, so in terms of looking to the future, we are looking forward to starting another Female Composer Fridays, um, sort of as a, a spring um, companion to the fall Female Composer Fridays that um, were recorded by uh, Trinity Wall Street. But these will be submitted by anybody. So it's you are encouraged to participate. And if you would be interested in participating, um, just go to our contact page on our website. Um, we're going to feature weekly videos on Fridays at noon, starting March 4th, so going through Lent, um, and then through Easter, and ending on Friday, June 3rd, in a, um, June 5th is, is Pentecost, so that will kind of be our, our, our Pentecost offering, and it's choral and organ videos. Um, we, in doing these Female Composer Fridays, are spotlighting great host composers, their lectionary lists, um, but folks are also welcome to bring new repertoire that we may not be familiar with. Um, so I, I hope that you all will consider being involved. 
also March 6th is, um, is like, what's it called? It's, it's essentially women composer Sunday. That's what it's called. And, <laughs> um, if you go to the society of women organists, everybody is encouraged to play music or sing music by a woman on March 6th and to post that online um, with a certain hashtag. Um, I, I'm not exactly sure at the moment what it is, but um, that's on Society of Women, Society of Women Organists webpage. Um, so now I'll share with you some resources um, so that you can kind of <laughs> tell what, what all we've been talking about here. Um, and I bet some of you also may have some resources to share. So I would be very interested to know. Um, Janet and I, although we um, work on this a lot um, and have, have studied it, I, we don't want to claim any expertise over anybody else or, um, you know, what, what you all have to offer is also very valid. So this is our resources page on Amplified Female Composers. Um, and I just want to walk through some of the major ones that I think you should know about. Lectionary based, great host of composers. This is that one that Janet and I were talking about um, that we are part of. And if you go to the Women Composers database, um, it will take you through every Sunday. And there are all of these recommendations for every single Sunday of We've, we've done all of year B and we're through Easter, through Pentecost of year C. Um, and if you scroll over, you can see YouTube links, links to where to buy the score um, down at the bottom. Um, some people miss this scroll, right? That's important. <laughs> um, there's, there's a lot more there. So that's a major resource. All of the choral um, pieces are listed up here within the spreadsheet. And then for organ, scroll to the bottom and you'll see like a list of, of pieces for that season. Um, this is Cecilia's list. It's slightly less comprehensive, but if you're looking for something that's maybe more um, curated um, or just fewer things to wade through, uh, it's just an independent blog and she's done all of year B and she also has like listings for different seasons. Um, so that's also linked on our website. The Society of Women Organists, SWO, um, they're a great group uh, based in England. And one of the things that they have been doing is compiling lists of, um, they, well, they have this incredible, like, just tome <laughs> that goes through every composer they can think of alphabetically by, um, by country and tells you a bit about the composer and some of their pieces. Um, and a newer thing that they have done is uh, liturgical listings. So on, on their website, you can also find music for, they, they've, they've just started this listing for Lent through Pentecost, um, or Lent through Corpus Christi, theirs is. Um, and you can find organ solo, choral unaccompanied, and choral accompanied there. So those are the main lectionary resources that I would nudge you towards. Um, in terms of um, just wanting to program for a certain Sunday. Um, then if you're interested in, in expanding your choral library, um, Multitude of Voices is a fantastic anthology set. Um, they've just been coming out in the last few years. There are three volumes, there are more coming soon. Uh, Louise Stewart, who um, coordinates, edits these, um, is also one of the contributors to Great Host. And, um, the first volume is SATB, second volume is Upper Voices, and third is Advent to Candlemas. I just got a set of these. Um, I got a set of volume one for my choir um, as um, just sort of like a, a founding gift in our, in our library. And they're wonderful, especially for Lent, actually. There's a lot of really good stuff in there. Um, this Sarah McDonald Sela series the piece that we listened to, My Eyes for Beauty Pine, that's from this series. Um, and I think Sarah has done an absolutely wonderful job in curating this. There are individual octavos and every piece that I have met in this series has been a gem. Um, so she's 
Stephanie Martin as well has published, uh, oh, it's a really great Advent piece. It's a little mortal flesh for double choir. Um, it's fantastic, Cecilia McDowell. Um, so I really encourage you all to check these out. You can preview them online. That's through CELA um, and the Hildegard Publishing Company as well. Um, everything that the Hildegard Publishing Company publishes is by women and they just try to curate the best of the best um, to get this repertoire out there. So those are the choral resources. Um, for organ, I bet some of you know, before I change the tabs, <laughs> does anybody have an anthology of organ music by women um, that they would like to, to share? Of course, you all know individual composers that you like and you just, you can play their music. Well, there are a couple anthologies that I found really useful. This, this one, Organ Music by Female Composers, um, it's a, a German publication. So actually it has more German and that area composers than I knew. And these I would say are like intermediate to advanced level really serious music um, that, that you can dig into and some wacky modern things if, if you're looking to program some like really out there cool stuff on a recital. Um, this um, Women Composers album from ECS is probably more um, Sunday morning friendly. Uh, it's uh, I would say it's not like very <laughs> critically edited, but it's very accessible and um, good for students, good for Sunday. Uh, and it has that Florence Price adoration in it as well as some, some other pieces. So th that one is, is a good go-to. And then there's um, this organ music by women composers before 1800. That's where we found that Katerina Asandra that we featured in our um, Lenten project. Um, I think this is a lovely anthology, but I think there's also a lot of really good stuff online um, that, and there's always more stuff coming up online. Um, so uh, I would encourage you as well to just check out CPDL and IMSLP. Um, and there are also listings. Um, if you wanna Google like works by women in public domain, you can find that. Um, and then lastly, the, the last group of resources on our website is audio for organ. So we, we link to every Pipe Dreams episode and there are a lot of them that um, feature works by women. So if you just wanna throw that on sometime. Um, and I also really wanna highlight Sarah Simcoe's Living Voices. This is a new um, multi-volume CD, a uh, multi-volume set, the first CD is out. Sarah is a fantastic organist. She's a DMA student at Michigan, I think. And um, this is the first volume in her collection, Living Voices, which, um, which features American women composers. Uh, so that's really exciting. And she also was in the, um, in the Demisieux um, Gregorian Chorale Preludes project. Um, so, uh, yeah, you can buy her CD on her website, and I think it's a lovely way to support somebody doing this work, and she's doing it really well. Um, there are also some other CDs that we list, Krista Rockich and Gail Archer, um, and there, yeah, I'm sure there are lots of other things as well. If you'd like to add to our resources, um, you can go to our contact page, and we'd be very interested to hear from you. So that's a little bit about um, our project and hopefully how you can take it forward. And I think at this time, um, we're happy to open the floor up to questions. Thank you. I'm glad this is recorded because, you know, I don't have paper and pencil to, to jot down. So thank you. Thank you so much for, uh, for presenting this incredible database. Um, hi, <laughs> thank you for um, uh, this awesome Zoom meeting, um, Janet and Carolyn. Uh, Janet, I guess we have a familiar um, 
contact Camilla Fallon and she sent me the link to this meeting. Uh, she's in a choir that I sing at. I'm also a composer um, building my sacred music rep. And so I just got the link uh, about uh, 20 minutes before this began. So it was, it was nice to stumble upon it. Um, I guess my main question would be, um, do you have any pointers for uh, living unpublished composers who are building their sacred rep uh, in terms of collaboration or opportunities, um, et cetera? Absolutely. And I think so many living composers find their ways through different channels. Um, one thing that would probably be helpful, it just sounds like you're already doing, is to sing in a choir, work with the choir, um, work with conductors, and um, I imagine that many of us on this call are likely church musicians or um, organists who work for religious institutions. Um, there are lots of times when I am planning music and I think, you know, what would be really lovely is a setting of this particular psalm text. Or what would be really helpful is a piece um, that my choir can sing when I um, need something for soprano altos and basses and don't have tenors in today, you know, so I, I do imagine that if you're able to connect with somebody um, near you, that that would be really helpful as a composer um, to start getting um, writing music and um, I know that um, we also have some other composers on the call here, Ala, um, and so um, lots of ways to be connected and stay connected. Carolyn, go ahead. Um, I, I'm not a composer and I don't have all the answers <laughs> because I haven't gone through this process. Um, but I would just add to what Janet said. Um, I think if I think there are people who would probably be happy to perform your work if you reach out. Um, and part of it is getting performances by um, people that other people look up to and then we'll see. And um, I also would say Sarah McDonald and St. James Music Press um, tend to, um, yeah, take take people on who maybe haven't published before or um, like Sarah, Sarah is really into breaking down the barrier um, between women and publishing because women are still more likely to self-publish and, and Sarah wants to kind of change that. St. James Music Press is great. So um, yeah, throw that out there. Thank you guys. I just wanted to uh, say hi, a little bit tired today just came. <laughs> So uh, I am uh, enjoyed the presentation. Thank you, Nathan, for arranging that. And I'm uh, um, uh, glad to meet the Lisa's and glad to meet Janet and Carolyn. And I put some links uh, um, in, in the chat. So would be happy if you have time to chip. Uh, I also uh, agree right now, I recorded some of pieces myself, want to record all my pieces and I'm doing videos which I will put on YouTube shortly. I got excited about connecting pieces with visuals. And uh, in fact, I, I learned even computer program right now and getting more and more involved in that. So just interesting how you can do it. <laughs> yeah, so, and um, yeah, just want to say hi. Thank you. Thanks so much. Um... It has been really extraordinary to Carolyn and I, you were talking about, you know, YouTube and videos and technology um, because Carolyn and I live in different states. <laughs> I live in New York City and she's um, in New Haven and almost everything we did this entire year and a half was through Zoom um, on the internet using lots of shared Google Docs and Google Drive spreadsheets and um, uh, we're grateful that this has all come together in these ways and um, would love to always be connected with more living composers. So it's good to see you both. Just wanted to say that uh, um, Dale Archer has a great resource and she's connected with women uh, composers organists regularly. So and she kindly commissioned me my piece. She found me and commissioned it. it was very nice and toured it all over the world before pandemic. So she's very nice person, Dale Archie.
That's excellent. Yeah, thank you. Um, Nathan, any thoughts um, or any questions that um, we might have before? I know we're approaching the 8.30 mark as we've promised. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to keep you all any later. Andrew, I would love to hear from, from you, if you don't mind me throwing you kind of under the bus here about what it's like working with a composer uh, when you're working on an anthem together with with uh with cecilia because you've you've done this with brenda portman you know so many times what is it like from from your side being the the lyricist when it works out it's pure joy um and it, um it sometimes it takes a little back and forth um but it's such a joy and and the thing that I notice most is that once my my words have been set to somebody else's music, it becomes something entirely different. And um, and that's exciting. And it's like sending a child into the world and and seeing what will happen. So it's just it's a lot of fun. It's um it's different with every composer. Some composers like rhyme and some don't. Some like to be able to repeat the text and some want a straight you know straight through line and so it's it's different, but it's it's a lot of fun. But, and thanks thanks for asking. Yeah, thanks. I've, just something that popped in my head. Any any other questions for Janet or Carolyn? Such a quiet such a quiet group. Janet, would that be possible that you also will put your email in in the contact information in the chat? Yes, um, I believe that the contact page on our website leads you to our Amplify website, which I will put in right now. Um, it's fairly easy to remember because it's amplifyfemalecomposers at gmail.com. Is that right, Carolyn? Yeah, and you can also <laughs> like our YouTube page, <laughs> Amplify Female Composers, or our Facebook page, Amplify Female Composers. That's the nice thing about coming up with a thing like <laughs> knowing what you're going to do because everything can have the same name. Well, hey. Well, thank you both so very much. It, it's so so great you know, that something like this came out of a uh, pandemic. So thank you so very much. Thanks so much for having us. It's great to thank see you, you all. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great night, everyone.